Chemistry lecture number 34, ionic compounds. If one atom transfers its electrons to another, they will stick together because one atom will have a positive charge and the other will have a negative charge. Electrostatic force is the force of attraction between opposite charges. Thus, anions and cations will stick together due to electrostatic force. The bond formed between atoms and cations is called an ionic bond. Uh, the new substance formed by the union of an anion and a cation is called an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are made from metal ion cations and non-metal anions. Now remember that metals are on the left side of the uh, periodic chart and the non-metals are sort of on the right side of the uh, periodic chart, on the right of the jagged line. Now if a substance is made of a metal and a non-metal, it's an ionic compound. So here's sort of a schematic of a periodic chart. So all these are metals right here, and then on the periodic chart you have this jagged line, and on this side of the jagged line you have the nonmetals. So a compound that's made out of a metal and a nonmetal is going to be an ionic compound, cation and anion. For example, sodium is a group 1A metal with one valence electron that wants to lose this electron to achieve an octet. Chlorine is a group 7A nonmetal with seven valence electrons that wants to steal an electron to achieve an octet. Sodium will transfer one electron to chlorine. Sodium will become Na plus and Cl will become Cl negative. Na plus and Cl negative will stick together because one's positive and the other's negative. So here's sodium from group one with its one valence electron. It will transfer this one electron to chlorine. <coughs> chlorine here now has eight electrons and a negative charge. Sodium's lost an electron and it has a positive charge. And the formula is going to be NaCl. And here's another example. Calcium is a group 2A metal with two valence electrons that it wants to get rid of. Uh, sulfur is a non-metal with six valence electrons that wants to steal two electrons to get an octet. Calcium will give two electrons to sulfur and become CAS. So here's calcium, a group two element. Group two elements want to get rid of two electrons. It transfers its two electrons to sulfur, which wants two electrons, because if it gets two more electrons, it'll have eight. So calcium has lost its two electrons. It has plus two charge. Sulfur has stolen two electrons. Two, four, six, eight electrons are on sulfur. It's happy. It has a negative two charge now also. So it becomes CAS. Now notice that the number of electrons lost by one atom equals the number of electrons gained by the other atom. In all ionic compounds, the total amount of positive charge on one particle must equal the total amount of negative charge on the other particle, giving a net charge of zero. And what would the formula for a compound made out of aluminum and bromine look like? Well, aluminum is in group 3A, right here, and these guys want to lose three electrons. And bromine is in group 7A and wants to steal one electron. So here's bromine, group 7. Its oxidation number is negative 1. It's going to want to steal one electron. So this creates a problem. How can aluminum get rid of three electrons when bromine only wants one? Well, the solution is to get three bromine atoms and have each one take an electron from aluminum. So if we look at our picture here with aluminum with its three electrons it wants to get rid of and three bromines, each wants to steal one to get an octet. So one electron would go here, another electron would go here, another electron from aluminum would go here. And now <clears throat> each bromine has stolen an electron from aluminum. Each bromine has eight electrons around it, so it's happy. Aluminum now has a plus three charge and it is attracted to the bromines which each have a total charge. If you add up all the negative charges, it's going to be negative three. Uh, when you write the formulas for ionic compounds, the cation or the positive ion is written first. So aluminum is the cation. And then the anion is written second. So the bromine has the negative charge, that's written second. Also the number of ions is written in subscripts on the lower right. So three bromines, so we have three right here. So the formula is Al Br3. And notice that the total amount of positive charge equals the total amount of negative charge. Uh, in our example, aluminum has an oxidation number of plus three. There are three bromine ions, each with a charge of negative one, and giving a total amount of negative charge is negative three. Uh, thus, three is the charge on aluminum, 
total amount of negative charge from the three bromines, with each bromine has negative one, so three bromines times negative one is negative three, plus three and negative three equals zero. Determining the formula of an ion a compound is easy if the ions have equal but opposite charges. You just stick the element symbols together with the cation listed first. So sodium is a plus one charge, chlorine is negative one, NaCl. Calcium plus two, sulfur negative two, CaS2. Uh, aluminum plus three, nitrogen negative three, AlN3. So that works if they have equal and opposite charges. Now, if the oxidation numbers are not equal and opposite, you cross the numbers and take the absolute value. So, for example, gallium is in group 3A. So here's gallium. These guys have a plus 3 oxidation state. And then, uh, so it's going to have a plus 3 oxidation number. Oxygen is in group 6A, has an oxidation number of negative 2. So here's oxygen in group 6. So all these elements have an oxidation number of negative 2. So... Gallium is plus three, oxygen is negative two. A formula for something made out of gallium and oxygen? Well, we crisscross the numbers. We take this number and we move it down here. We take the absolute value of this number and move it down there. So it's gonna be gallium two, oxygen three. All right. So. That's going to be the formula for a compound made out of gallium and oxygen. And this works because the two galliums each have a plus three charge and three oxygens each have a negative two charge. So two galliums, each with a plus three charge, so it's going to be plus six. Three oxygens, each oxygen has a negative two charge, so that's going to be negative six. So the total amount of positive charge is plus six, total amount of negative charge is negative six. Add it together and you get zero. So let's do some practice. What's the formula for a compound made out of calcium and chlorine? All right, calcium, it's in group two, so it's plus two. Chlorine, it's in group seven, so its oxidation number is negative one. You need to memorize the oxidation numbers of groups uh, 1A through 8A. Anyway, <coughs> crisscross the numbers. Our formula is Ca1, Cl2, and if there's only one of them, you don't have to write the one, so this just becomes CaCl2. And you always write the absolute value of the numbers. What's the formula for a compound made out of K and P? Potassium is in group one of the periodic chart, plus one charge. People ask, do you write plus one or one plus? Doesn't matter. Phosphorus, group five on the periodic chart, right here. Memorize that group five or negative three oxidation state, so negative three or three negative. Crisscross the numbers again. This becomes K3P1 or just K3P. All right. What's the formula for a compound made out of Mg and N? Magnesium is a group two element, so it's plus two. Nitrogen, group five element, so it's negative three. Crisscross the numbers, it's gonna be Mg 3, N, 2. Calcium chloride, K3P, and Mg3, N, 2. They're all examples of binary ionic compounds. And these are ionic compounds that are made of two types of elements, one metal and one nonmetal. We've been getting the oxidation numbers of the elements by using the periodic chart, and we know that groups 1a through 3a have values of plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. Um, 1, plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. And we know that groups 5a through 7a have values of negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Most of the transition elements have two or more oxidation numbers. So for example, iron can exist as iron 2 plus or iron 3 plus. So these elements right here in this zone, they have variable oxidation states. Sometimes it's plus 2, sometimes it's plus 3, sometimes it's plus 1. However, 
There are a few transition elements that have only one oxidation state. Um, you need to memorize the oxidation states of these elements that are listed below. So you just need to memorize that scandium has a plus three charge, uh, nickel is going to have a plus two oxidation, zinc has a plus two oxidation state, silver has a plus one oxidation, and cadmium has a plus two oxidation state. So if I ask you to write a nickel ion, you'd write Na2+. Just have to memorize them, sorry. <laughs> Now there's a type of ion called a polyatomic ion. This is a group of atoms that are bonded together and they've stolen or lost electrons. And they behave like a single atom with a charge. Now you need to memorize the names and formulas of these commonly used polyatomic ions. In the same way that you need to memorize the alphabet in order to learn to read and write, you have to memorize the formulas for some of these commonly used polyatomic ions. That's just the way it is. Um, so I'm not going to recite all of these. You can either uh, you know, freeze the frame and then write these down or go to www.richardlouis.com and get the uh, list off the uh, online lecture notes. The only thing I should point out here is that uh, ammonium is the only polyatomic ion that has a positive charge. And also acetate right here, you can write it two different ways. Uh, the second way right here, CH3COO negative, that gives information about the structure of the acetate polyatomic ion. Okay, so be sure to get these memorized. Just as important as memorizing the alphabet. All right, well writing formulas of ionic compounds with polyatomic ions is identical to the way you write binary ionic compounds. Uh, when starting, put parentheses around the polyatomic ion with the charge outside the parentheses. Crisscross the oxidation numbers and put the number from the cation in subscripts outside the parentheses of the polyatomic ion. So let me tell you what all those words mean. I'll show you. Write the formula for a compound matter of zinc and nitrate. Okay, so you need to memorize that zinc has a plus two oxidation state. And then nitrate, you need to memorize the formula of nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. All right, so we're gonna put parentheses around the polyatomic ion, and then we're gonna crisscross the numbers like we did before. So it's gonna be ZN parentheses NO3. So the one goes here and the two goes there. And since there's only one zinc, we can just write zinc NO3, two, and that's our answer. So this tells us that a compound matter of zinc and nitrate is one zinc and two nitrate polyatomics attached to the zinc. Compound matter of sodium and sulfate. All right, sodium is a group one element plus one. Sulfate, you need to memorize that sulfate is SO4 with a negative two charge. Put parentheses around the polyatomic with the charge outside, crisscross the numbers, so it's going to be Na2SO4-1. And since there's one sulfate, we can just write this as Na2SO4. Let's write the formula for a compound made out of strontium and sulfate. Strontium is in group 2, plus 2 sulfate, SO4 with a negative 2 charge. All right, well, these have equal and opposite charges, so you just stick them together. SR, SO4. And since there's only one sulfate, we can just write SR, SO4. All right, the formula for a compound made out of aluminum and carbonate. All right, so aluminum is group three. Carbonate, you need to memorize carbonate is CO3 with a negative two charge. Put parentheses around it, okay? Let's crisscross the numbers. And it's gonna give me Al2, take the absolute value, parentheses, CO3, three. All right, this tells you that there are three carbonate ions attached to two aluminums. Write the formula for a compound made out of magnesium and hydroxide, magnesium. Mg, it's in a group two, so it has a plus two charge. Hydroxide, you need to memorize hydroxide is OH with a negative one charge. I'll put a one there. Put parentheses around it with the charge on the outside. Crisscross the numbers. This is going to be Mg1, OH2.
People ask, does it matter if you put brackets or parentheses? Really doesn't matter. And since there's only one magnesium, we do Mg OH2. That's the correct way to write it. If you wrote MgOH2 without the parentheses, that's wrong. Now you need parentheses since there's more than one OH attached to the Mg. That would be wrong on an exam. Write the formula for a compound made out of ammonium and nitrate. Okay, ammonium, you need to memorize ammonium is NH4 with a plus one charge. And nitrate, NO3 with a negative one charge. And we'll put parentheses around both of these. Okay, these are equal and opposite charges, so these just go together. H4, whoops, and O3. And since there's only one of each type, we can just write NH4 and O3. Write the formula for a compound made of ammonium and sulfate. Ammonium, NH4 with a plus one charge, sulfate, SO4, negative 2, crisscross the numbers, it's going to be NH4 SO4, 1, and since there's only one sulfate we can just write that. All right. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 34, Ionic Compounds.